This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. We've got a call on two ice machines that are not working. Both of them say off and have error messages present. So we're gonna dive into that. But first I thought, since the bin is almost empty, you ever see what's in the bottom of an ice bin? It's nasty. Nasty, gritty, gross stuff. So, open these guys up. This one has no water in the sump, and it's dry. This one has water. It's not dry. It's interesting. Uh, go right here. It says long harvest. Clear alert. Interesting. Machine is off. Let's go ahead and turn it on. See what happens, and then we'll do the same over here. This one, it's not too dirty, it's weird. All right, let's open this up, see what this one says. Long harvest and a bunch of T uh, sensor faults. So let's go ahead and turn off the long harvest. We'll just clear that alert. T3 and T4 guarantee it's gonna have bad sensors, so there's no point in clearing those. Um, let's go ahead and turn that on, see what happens. If we go over here and you go to service, real-time data, time and temp, you can see we've got bad sensors on this one too. T3 says 302 degrees, that's not good. But the sensors won't shut it down. All right, this one right here, service, real-time data, time and temp. Yeah, T3 and T4 sensors are bad. They're not 300 degrees. All right, well, we're just gonna watch this thing, see what happens. So this one started up and it looks like it filled with water. It's getting there. This one is still on a pre-chill and it hasn't filled with water yet. I'm waiting for the water fill to start. Before I jump to any conclusions, I'm just watching each one make a batch of ice. And this one is about to harvest. It's starting to click and pop because the grid's getting full of ice. This one's following closely behind. So I'm just naturally watching to see what happens before I start pushing and pulling and fix something inadvertently. In the real time data, you can actually see the microphone frequency. The ice thickness probe is a microphone. And it's not very high and we have a completely full grid of ice. So that's a problem. That microphone should be getting much higher. Um, it should be have it should have harvested by now. So what we could do is do a tap test Well, we can just manually harvest it. So I'm just going to tap on it There we go, so it's working. Maybe it's just adjusted way too thick Now that's not the appropriate tap test that they want you to do but that's just me proving and, and manually harvesting it Manitowoc has a specific tap test they want you to do. But, okay, let's see what this one's looking like. This one's getting pretty thick, too. This one's registering a little bit higher. Yeah, that ice is pretty thick, too. But we're going to let the other one run. I'm just watching to see how this ice harvests, how it falls off the evaporator. It's going to tell me a lot of information. If it sticks on the evaporator, it could be dirty, all sorts of things. So that one just fell off. And this one is getting ready to but it's kind of sticking on there a little bit kind of having a hard time there it goes it just broke free you can see the vacuum when it breaks by looking at the top of the cubes you can see it right there all right we had a full sheet so i'm going to turn this guy off and uh, we're going to wait for the other one to dump and then we'll get our uh, pressure gauges and we'll watch them both operate and compare the pressures while they're running. This one too is taking too long and the ice is very thick. So I'm gonna go ahead and manually harvest this one too. Just by tapping on it. Okay, so we're gonna wait for that one to harvest. And then, uh, like I said, we'll get a pad and paper and cycle both of them and uh, watch the pressures. All right, I adjusted the thickness just like an eighth of a turn closer on both of them. Started them both up. Actually, I didn't. Let's turn them off. I thought I started them both up. So, start them both up at the same time now. 
and the moment that it goes into the freeze cycle we're going to start the stopwatch and start writing down the pressures and i've got both sets of probes right here these top two are the left machine these bottom two are the right machine and then we can uh, evaluate what kind of pressures we're running it's currently about 80 degrees ambient and i currently think that that's going to rise probably to about 85 degrees of a total high today so my right side machine is about to make ice but it ran out of water both machines made ice. Um, this one took about 18 minutes, which is way too long. This one took about 14 minutes, which was on the hair side of being long too. Um, before I go any further, I went ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and take a lunch, but I went ahead and uh, filled them both up with ice machine cleaner and uh, am running them through a wash cycle um, and gonna let it clean all the parts and then I'll pull the sensors apart because I noticed that the water levels were kind of low and stuff so I want to get that taken care of before we go any further. Alright, we're not going crazy on this. I'm just kind of giving it a good rinse down. It uh, cycled through. I'll rinse that stuff out of there. But look at the sensors. That's not good. That's probably why my water level was so low. There's like nasty stuff on there so we're just giving it a quick little rinse now that the cleaning's done just doing a couple different rinses um, I got the water level probes nice and clean same thing here nice and clean we're good so we're just uh, draining I ran some more ice machine cleaner through this one what I found is, is that the water filters are actually bypassed for this guy um, and that's probably why there's so much calcium in here this one didn't so much have calcium as it did just like slime buildup so this one I just ran some sanitizer through. We'll do another sanitizing thing once I put this back in. I'm noticing that on this left machine, and I saw this the, the first cycle that I made, that it's taken a long time for it to drop in suction pressure. In fact, the suction pressure even rose a few minutes in. So you see where we started. This is suction and discharge. So this one's dropping. Last I was at 45 PSI, but this one hit 52, then started to go up and linger which is interesting and the last one the left side took 18 minutes to make ice the right side took like 14 and that was before it cleaned so there's something something there but i'm going to finish watching this cycle i mean it's making it it's cold it doesn't have hot water makes me think that like um maybe possibly something in the compressor valve or maybe one of the um cool vapor valves is leaking by Usually if it's a cool vapor valve, you'll see it when it's um, when it's shut off. You'll see it never shutting off, basically. But And the left side machine is not even, I mean, it's barely starting to form frost or ice. But the right side machine has already got good ice on it, and it's starting to thicken up. Usually these machines need to make ice by the 14-minute mark, or there's something wrong, so... All right, I'm on the roof. This is a uh, uh, this is the machine that's taking a long time, and um, I don't have any compressor data, but I'm curious about the the valve and the or the reed or whatever in this compressor. I'm wondering if we're leaking by. So um, I uh, pump the system down by turning it off. So I'm pushing in the contactor, and the unit will only pull down to about 12 psi. Uh, my suction line temperature is about 102 degrees. Now when I let go kind of sounds like the valve in there is leaking by my suction pressure is rising suction temperature rose a little bit but it's not horrendous I would think that if it was a bad suction valve it'd be a lot worse um, we're gonna do the same to that machine because we have a working machine next to us and we're gonna test that one and see what it does all right let's see what this bad boy does okay so I'm gonna push in the low pressure control compressor is running Yeah, see it's already pulling a lot lower. So this guy right here pulled down to zero PSI and held when I shut it off and the suction line temperature didn't rise. So see, that other compressor 
has got a, a reed or something inside of it that's damaged. It's not pumping correctly. That's why we're running such a long freeze cycle on that other machine. Okay, I'm glad. See, sometimes these things can be a pain and it takes a while to figure it out. I thought it was gonna be a problem with the head pressure control valve, but actually no, uh-uh. It's just an inefficient compressor that's not pumping properly. All right, both have made ice. Um, I've adjusted the thickness. This one's still taking a little, a bit of a long time, obviously. And the pressures, you can see it like from the get-go. They both start around 56, but then towards the end, this one's getting low, it's, you know, and on the last cycle, it was even worse. So, um, this one definitely has a compressor that is going bad. This one right here is questionable because the pressures are a little low compared to the book, but um, I'm gonna let this one be and fix this one first and then evaluate the right side once we get the left side fixed. So, they're operating for now. Okay, we got the approval. We came back today. We just got done recovering the gas. Uh, recovered out just under 12 pounds, which is perfect because the factory charge is 12 pounds. You end up losing a lot when you're uh, recovering with the uh, Appian machine. It loses a lot, of, a lot gets trapped in there. So it comes with a bunch of new stuff. We put a new check valve in. It actually came with all these fittings right here. So we redid all this all the way up to here. It, I'm surprised it came with a new low pressure control too. So we got rid of all that crap. We put a new suction filter. It's not a dryer, it's just a suction filter. And then we're gonna put a new liquid dryer downstairs. And then we redid some electrical because the new one, the it came with a plug too and it was shorter. So we just ran a chase nipple and uh, ran it into there. So we're getting ready to pull the evacuation downstairs. All right, we're in the process of watching the machine operate. We already vacuumed it, charged it, everything's good. Um, the first batch we let it throw or dump and we didn't pay attention. So this is technically the second cycle and we're currently on the third cycle. So after the second cycle, the pressures were much better. The time was much better. Um, but we did notice that it was a little bit on the thin side, so we adjusted it a little bit thicker and we're watching our next cycle right now. Uh, so far, we're looking pretty darn good. The machine is now making ice, so here's what we have. Our cycles were a little bit longer by an adjustment to thicken it up in a little bit. So we're right on the money. Less than 12 minutes for the freeze, less than a minute for the harvest. The only thing that's off is the harvest high side pressure, and I'm telling you every single time, so we're in the 70 degree range, it says it should be 150 to 170, and we're 142 to 133. I have never, even on a brand new machine, I always see low harvest high side pressure, so I kind of ignore that one. If you look at the suction pressure in the harvest, we're on the money, 89 PSI the entire way through. And if you look at during the freeze cycle, we're 250 to 235 and 55 to 38. We're, we're right on the money, just a hair low, but yeah, we're good. This machine is working properly now. All right, we are wrapping this one up. Everything's good. Uh, machines are full of ice, so yeah, they're happy. Ice machine calls, um, they can be time consuming. They can be stressful. Um, there's no like perfect solution if you if you talk to the manufacturer first off when you read manufacturers um, instructions on ice machines the first thing I'm going to give you the piece of advice I'll give you is whatever they say in the book however long they say it takes to clean their ice machines double or triple that time okay they never publicize the true length of time that it takes to properly clean their machines okay my opinion on that is they need to be able to market these machines as cleanable in a set amount of time Oftentimes, they're instructing um, the end user on how to clean them themselves. So they're, they're trying to put any information out there to make it seem like, hey, this is a better machine than the other one, okay? Um, each ice machine has their own weaknesses and their own strengths. Uh, they all do the same thing. They make ice, okay? One of them just, you know, you have to do these things to clean it. The other one, you got to do those things to clean it. So it's really like they're kind of I don't really have a preference per se, but there's certain machines that I work on a lot. OK, um, I happen to work on these Manitowoc ice machines quite a bit, so I'm pretty comfortable working on them. Uh, other brands, too, I happen to work on quite a bit that I become more comfortable on. And then if I come up to an ice machine that I rarely work on, then, of course, I'm going to scratch my head a little bit more. OK, but even when you're comfortable working on an ice machine, such as these Manitowoc, these are the the quiet cube or the. Um, uh, CVD uh, machines, uh, Indigo Quiet Cube, I think is what they call this one. 
Um, I'm comfortable working on them, but every once in a while it makes you scratch your head, okay? So just because I work on them often, I tend to notice, like I mentioned in the video, that no matter what, I always see low head pressure in the harvest cycle. Always, okay? And uh, in the beginning, I've chased this problem. I've chased it. I've called the manufacturer. My head pressure's low. Well, it shouldn't be. Change the compressor. Doesn't fix it. Uh, put a new head pressure control valve in there. Doesn't fix it. So I've become very reluctant to change parts for that head pressure, you know, for the lower head pressure. I kind of leave that alone because I tend to notice that these things run fine. Um, they make ice great. But it can also be confusing because when you have multiple things going on, you know, and you see low head pressure, you start to think, oh man, this thing has a leak. So then you chase the leak down, you never find it, you recover the gas, you find out it wasn't short on gas. I mean, there's so many things on these, okay? Um, so just because it's published in the manual, like this is how it's supposed to run, you have to look at that and be cautious. Ironically, that high side pressure I've noticed it over multiple models of these Manitowoc ice machines. So there's the Q series, there's the S models, and then now you have the Indigo models, and they all have quiet cubes, and I've always noticed that the head pressure that's published where they should be running in the harvest cycle is always lower for some reason, you know? And like I said, I've chased it to no avail. So when it comes to the high side pressure, I don't completely ignore it in the harvest cycle, but it's just kind of in the back of my mind. Like, I'm not going to jump at it just because it has low high side harvest pressure okay now if i see low suction side harvest pressure and low high side harvest pressure then sure i might dig into that a little bit more but if i see normal operating suction pressure then you know i might push the harvest pressure the high side pressure off okay um and the reason why i'm talking about the harvest cycle is it's commonly known on these cvd machines these quiet cube machines um, you diagnose most refrigerant charge issues in the harvest cycle. They show themselves first in the harvest cycle because when, the, you know, they require so much extra refrigerant when the head pressure control valve opens um, to flood the condenser, to raise the head pressure in the system to help harvest the ice off. And that's essentially what it does. These units all use some sort of a hot gas or a cool vapor uh, refrigerant for defrost. Okay. On this particular model machine, they actually use cool vapor. So what they do is, is they have a T on the top of the receiver and they grab the warm, uh, vapor off the top of the receiver and they backflow it into the evaporator and it helps to harvest the ice off of there. Okay. In the past, a lot of manufacturers use hot gas and this particular one chose not to do that. There's probably a couple issues I can, you know, kind of guess it has a lot to do with having to run extra refrigerant lines all the way up to the roof and stuff like that. But anyways, again, going off on a tangent here. Um, so, you know, there, these problems can be head scratchers sometimes. Okay. So just because the book says to do something, just stop and watch the machine operate. So you notice ice machines, I'm not in a hurry when I'm working on these machines. Okay. I dig into them. I monitor them. I always watch the first cycle without putting gauges on or anything just to observe the machine. You know, that way sometimes you can get in there and you start tweaking and pushing. Oh, that thickness probe looks too thick. So you adjust it before you even watch it make ice. And then you can't find anything wrong. And you say, well, it must have been the thickness sensor, but maybe there's something else going on. So don't start twisting and pulling and pushing because you can inadvertently fix a problem and not know it. And then, you know, or think you fixed it and then you really didn't. And then it turns into a callback and that kind of stuff. Okay. So, um, looked at the machine, found, you know, little things like, you know, the, the, the machine, when it went into a harvest at first, it was out of water. Like that's not normal. You know, um, I noticed there was a little bit of slime buildup. So then that led me to look into the cleanliness of the machine. That water level probe that I showed in the machine had uh, slime and calcium on it. Well, when that has slime and calcium on it, the machine thinks that it has more water than it does. So that's why it was running out of water at the end of the harvest cycle. The water level probe was dirty. Clean that up. But again, big picture diagnostics, right? Went in there, saw, hey, this is what I'm thinking, but I noticed the machine is dirty. I start cleaning it. I'm not doing a thorough cleaning, just a quick cleaning, made sure the customer was okay with it. Then evaluate again, okay? Um, okay. You know, we're still having some issues here. The thickness is still too thick. Okay. So start adjusting the thickness sensors, but I don't just stop there. Okay. Again, watching the pressures. I like to watch on these Manitowoc machines. If I don't find anything wrong, 
Um, they usually have less than a 15 minute cycle. I like to watch at least three to four cycles on these things. Okay. If you're working on like a Hoshizaki machine that has about a 30 minute cycle when it's not hot outside up to a 45 minute cycle when it's really hot, you still got to watch at least two cycles on a Hoshi. Okay. They're time consuming. There's nothing that you can rush on these things. I mean, you can try to take a shortcut, but it might kick you in the butt later. So as usual, I take my time, watch the cycles, put it out on paper like you guys saw, and start just evaluating. Why is this pressure doing this? This machine is taking a lot longer to make ice. And look at this trend because I wrote down the pressures and I'm comparing it to the machine next to it. I can say, hey, look at suction pressures. We have the same water temperature, same air temperature. We assume that the refrigerant charge is the same. Why is this machine going faster? This machine going slower? Uh, the slower machine is running higher pressure, but it starts out low. It's kind of weird, you know? And that led me into think, I said it very on early in the, the, the call, you know, I think we might have something going on with this compressor, but, um, you know, I still evaluate it further. Now, um, the compressor itself happened to be under warranty. They didn't pay for labor. It was a manufacturer's five-year warranty on it, but I had to be a hundred percent sure. Okay. So I decided I had a hunch that there was inefficient compressor, but then I went ahead and did the valve test. Now the valve test, the manufacturer doesn't tell you how to do that. Okay. That's something that I've done on my own. I'm not going to diagnose a compressor just for that, but I just used the, the working compressor that was doing good and compared it to the compressor that was suspect. And I noticed a big discrepancy when one compressor would not pump past 15 PSI, but the other one pulled down to zero PSI very easily. Okay. And then when I shut it off, the one that wouldn't pull the 15 slowly rose. Okay. And the one that pumped down to zero didn't rise at all. And I also noticed that the suction line temperature on the one that was having a hard time pumping down that rose when I shut it off. Okay. All of that indicated to me that we had an inefficient compressor, more than likely the suction reed, uh, the little reed flapper was uh, loose or I mean, um, weak on the compressor and it was allowing refrigerant to bleed back through. Okay. So that's my theory. Um, I know that we had an inefficient compressor. I don't know a hundred percent. This suction reed was the problem. Unfortunately, it's a manufacturer's warranty compressor, so I have to return it to the manufacturer. I can't cut it up and, you know, look into it. But I suspect that if we cut it up, we'd find some some issues with the reed on the suction valve is, would be my thought. But anyways, I am not a perfect service technician. I do not know everything. I tend to think that I'm a little bit inquisitive and I do like to take my time and make sure that everything is working properly. So if I had to guess, I think the first time, the first call where I went out there and cleaned the machines and watched it operate, I was probably there for about four and a half hours watching that machine, just monitoring it. Okay. Um, when I went back with, uh, to change the compressor, we were probably there for about six hours, maybe just a little under six hours. And I did have another service technician, but I was letting him do all the work. So really I was just monitoring and I just wanted to see the after effects and, you know, record the numbers. Okay. So he was really doing all the work. I really didn't do much on that other than help him to get stuff up on the roof. I think he actually did most of that too. So, um, Again, I am not in a hurry, okay? I get a lot of questions about this. Guys, I run the show here. I can choose to take as long as I want, okay? But even if I wasn't in charge, this is how I would approach service calls, okay? Um, I understand that some companies don't give you the time to do so. Hey, you know, I can't control that, but I always take the proper time needed to do these right because I don't have time to go back to this call. That's just the way I roll, okay? I really, really appreciate you guys making it to the end here. Do me a favor. If you guys haven't already, um, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, you can support the channel. You can help me out. Down in the show notes are some affiliate links. If there's any tools that you're considering purchasing that you saw that I used in this video, um, if you happen to choose to use True Tech Tools, which is an online website that I do recommend, okay, if they're the better price, I mean, if you can use your local supply house, do so, okay, but if you choose to use True Tech Tools, I have an offer code, big picture, one word, if you use that offer code, you'll save 8% off of your order, and I get a small little commission, so you help to support the channel by using that offer code, okay? If you guys could please share that offer code with anybody that you know that might be in the market for any new tools, check out True Tech Tools website because, again, that will help me, okay? Um, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you guys Monday evening, 5 p.m. Pacific when I do my live streams on YouTube. Um, yeah, and that's it. We'll catch you guys on the next one, okay?